Yeah, this is Emily Moyer. She has agreed to get up really early and talk to me about this thing because I think she's really passionate about what it is that she's talking about. And I really want to hear it because it, I agree with her. I think that we all need to hear this stuff. So one of the things that's really hot right now is this discussion about program, programmable substances, programmable matter. What is it? I think it's all kinds of things. I think it's all kinds of things. You guys know I talk a lot about food and <clears throat> Last night, <clears throat> excuse me, last night I was at a, a lecture I was giving and I said to the audience, try to imagine your life without food. How much time would that free up? <laughs> Asleep and then doing other things. It would free it all up, wouldn't it, Emily? I mean, think about it. <laughs> Especially for someone like me because I'm a foodie. I don't, oh, know, if I want to, I don't well, know if I want to imagine the world without food. <laughs> life See, that's without the food. thing. That's the thing I am too. But yeah. Emily has been talking um, here and there, bits and pieces, very, uh, it's, and it's very enticing, this idea that she has about sugar, uh, because I, a sugar, wheat, and dairy, the three most addictive food stuff substances that are out there, I truly believe that grains kill. We all, I mean, dairy, you should have, even though cheese is just, you know, I mean, yeah. it's like crack to me. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult, but it's also something that, um, as a very abusive thing to eat yeah. um, because of the sources. And the, but she's going to talk to us about sugar. So Emily, it's all yours. So let me just give you a quick background and sort of how I came to this spot. Um, about almost four years ago, mm -hmm. I found myself in a really, you know, like a bad place uh, emotionally because I was, you know, at that time still dealing with programming breaking down and not not dealing with it and stuff like that but also really a really bad, bad place physically for the first time in my life yeah. um, I was just sick all the time and didn't feel good and um, I heard this woman speaking on um, Mel Fabregas' show a health show called Sanitas and her name was Amber Oak and she um, is a very dear friend of mine who just died recently oh. very sad um, but she was talking about Candida and I listened to she had had um, she had suffered from multiple sclerosis in her 20s and had basically healed herself from multiple sclerosis once she realized that it was caused by candida and eating a diet that would clear the body of that. Mm -hmm. She feels that almost all diseases, particularly all autoimmune diseases, are caused by candida. So I listened to her and I knew that this is what I had. And at the end of the interview, she I said that her office was in Los Angeles. So I, you know, I made an appointment when I was ready because I knew it was going to be a severe, strict diet. And so I went and saw her. And I went on a really, really strict diet for 90 days, which I mostly still adhere to today. And it's no grain, no, sorry, not no grain. It's no gluten, no dairy, no sugar, no soy, nothing artificial, and a bunch of other small little things in there, which sounds really crazy. Um, and, but I thought, okay, at this point, I was willing to pretty, pretty much do anything to feel better. And very immediately, I started to feel better. My body started to come back to what I knew it to be. But one of the things that I didn't expect that, hap that started to happen was the programming really started to break down. So as I was becoming more healthy and things should have been really good, I was also starting to have memories of things that I, that I <clears throat> you know, had sort of blocked before that had been fuzzy and they were all, it was almost like the healthier my body came, the faster became, the faster they were coming and I couldn't deal with it. And so <clears throat> I was still engaging in other forms of destructive behavior to deal with that. And one of the big things for me, <clears throat> more even than the gluten or anything like that, was the sugar. I had always been, since my teenage years, a sugar addict. As a child, I was not permitted to have candy. So when I had, when I turned 16, for me, that was licensed to eat candy. <laughs> and I sure did. Um, and I was <laughs> sugar to the point that I would wake up in the middle of the night, go to 7-Eleven, buy candy, come home and eat it in my bed and wake up with gummy bears stuck in my hair and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> you know? um, and, yeah, it was crazy. Um, in speaking with a lot of other people who have um, backgrounds with uh, projects, programs, things like that, they also had a lot of issues with sugar and certain kinds of foods and whatnot. Yeah. And I even got to the point, and I'm not 100% certain about this, but you know, we're in this space now where we can't wait for 100% certainty to start talking about things. Right. I feel like it was possible that mm, 
missions and things like that were actually encapsulated in these trips to go get candy. That I was thinking I was waking up in the middle of the night to go get sugar, to go get candy. And uh-huh. there was actually activities being done. And then I was at being sort of brought back into myself with the consumption of the candy. Wow. And, um, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I've spoken about it with some other people. And I don't think it's that far off. So anyway, so uh, the, the biggest thing about that diet for me it was that I wasn't eating sugar anymore. And so now, with the exception of occasional dark chocolate that doesn't have sh- a- a- any or very little of any kind of sugar in it, I don't eat candy. I haven't eaten candy for four years. And uh, there was a time when I thought I would never be able to live like that. But you know, during that four years is when all of the um, ability to finally begin talking about the things I'd experienced came when the, rec- you know, like, the recognition of what had really gone on in my life and the ability to start to make changes. You know, once I came through that really heavy beginning part where all the programming, the programming was breaking down, I was able to get a hold of myself again and pull myself together and really start to make forward progress. But I think people, this, the food we eat is keeping us so fuzzy that it is store, helping to uh, contain and store and, and yeah. not make clear a lot of the traumas that we've been through, a lot of the programming for some of us. And so anyway, so that's been very interesting. What started happening for me, people started talking about um, programmable matter. Like I paid a lot of attention to all the black goo conversation. <laughs> and I, had, I wasn't anywhere near uh, understanding sugar as programmable matter at the time, but I'll be, I'll just let you know now that I became suspicious of Harold Kautz Villa when I looked, I, I, I thought it's, it, I mean, I liked him for all the same reasons you did and other people did, but I heard him, you know, he had created a product to help people with more gallons. And when I, I was already in, into the diet and knowing some about sugar at this point, but in that product, there was sugar. And so I thought, oh, this doesn't make any sense. Sugar is what feeds Morgellons because I think Morgellons is directly related to candida. And candida is a condition of yeast, fungus, and, and parasites in the body that are all feeding on the foods that break down to sugar. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that's interesting. The thing he says that is supposed to help Morgellons has sugar in it. So I was immediately a little bit suspicious. That was my first clue that there was something wrong there. And then all the other stuff came out. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so fast forward, you know, there's starting to be more and more things about programmable matter and about how information can be stored in the body on DNA and this and that, whatnot. And I remember a couple of years ago, it's been more than that now, but when the vaping machines first became big. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had a friend who I loved dearly in Texas who was really early on to that. She was the first person I knew who was doing that. She was addicted to it. She was like on it like it was like a pacifier, like a binky and I... Right. And I noticed her behavior started to become strange and we just weren't really friends anymore. And so right. I thought, dude, is this like, is there mind control related to that? So I started to research mind control e-cigarettes, mind control vaping machines. And I found a quote, which I wish I would have saved because I didn't realize how important it was then. And it's, I think it's either been scrubbed or I just can't find where I found it then. I found a quote from Nikola Tesla that said yeah. something like, and I'm, you know, I may not have the exact wording here, something like in the future, Men will smoke these little machines. They will taste good. They will think they are cool and they will be under mind control. And I thought, wow, okay, look, look at this. It's a crystalline liquid. It's sweet. Mm-hmm. And the way that most of these machines are charged, they charge the USB port on the computer. So there yeah. could be an app in that running in the background. There could be transferring information and it could be being stored in yeah. crystalline, a crystalline liquid. And yeah. being, then the people are not only smoking it in and taking it into their body, but right. they're blowing it out. Have you seen how much smoke these things create? It's like yeah. they're making chemtrails. Like if, you're, if someone blows that in the bar, it's like they're blowing chemtrails in the bar. Exactly. Yeah. So I started to think, oh, that's interesting. That could be programmable matter and that could carry information. And I, I, I left it at that for like a number. I've thought that for a number of years. And then sometime earlier this year on one of my runs, it just dawned on me. I, I was really thinking about how sugar is in everything. And I was like, it's crystalline, it's cubic. And they're talking about storing information on crystals and cubes and, and that you can store the whole world, store the whole world of information on something this big. And actually, and even I, I correlate a lot of different information. There was an episode of fringe where this kid was storing historical data on these little glass cubes and Mm -hmm. they look almost like sugar cubes. Right. So I was like, Oh my God, the sugar, it's crystalline. It's cubic. They both, they love both of those things. They could be like using that as something to program or something to store information on or to transfer information to. 
And I, I, you know, I have done a little teeny bit of research on it and, and there seems to be some, like, I, like for, if I can understand what they're talking about, I don't think I'm completely off base. I need to have time to do more research and my life just isn't set up for that right now. But I've right. decided to talk about it anyway because I think, um, especially for everybody, but really in our community, this is super duper important. And I also, so, okay, so there we go. Think about it. And then I started to think about how when you're little, like they advertise the cartoons on the cereal, sugar cereal boxes. So then you have kids sitting in front, they know they're going to eat the cereal while they're watching TV. And one of the things that happened to me when I was experiencing program breaking down was this flush of like cartoon tunes that yeah. had words and information attached to them. Like wow. I would find myself like, like whistling or singing like the, like the Smurf song, but not with the, the words from the Smurf thing. There would be all of this random words that I would consider to be uh, like words coming from something demonic or entity kind of related right. or that were um, twilight language <laughs> kind of words. Yeah. And it was just coming out. Like I don't, it was almost like coming out of me at the speed that like when you clean your computer, you see the words going across the computer when they're looking through files and stuff. It was right. really weird. So I thought, wow, that could be, this could be going on for a really long time. And it's only increased to the point where now there's sugar in everything. Like there's things that like you would never yeah. think have sugar. But if you look, you know, I go, to, I, I shop at a very uh, fancy, all organic, very healthy kind of market here in Los Angeles. And I still struggle to find products that don't have any kind of sugar in them. I know, okay. I know. It's crazy. And, it, you know, it used to be that, like, you would go into a store and buy a coffee or a tea, and if you wanted sweetener, you had to tell them. Now, if you don't want it, you have to tell them because they're putting it in it. it it's everywhere. It's in everything. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's a, you know, it's ubiquitous, just like something like Candida can become ubiquitous. And once they know it's there, they can play with it and do whatever they want with it. All right. So there's that. But then I took it kind of even a little bit further. And I started to think, well, now they have all these people eating who are like supposedly avoiding sugar. Yes. Right. And they are, um, oh, the other thing with, with sugar is it's like, that's what feeds parasites. And if people actually went and really looked at their health, people are full of fungus, full of yeast and full of parasites. That's what mm -hmm. it is. people have it. They don't even know it. Anyone, you know, that's got bad breath, any kind of like exhaustion or overimmune disease or anything, it's all it's candida related. Okay. Mm -hmm. So parasites are feeding on our, you know, love sugar. And we have a parasitic consciousness going on in our reality for a long time, but it's right. at an extreme level right now. And it's also this parasitic consciousness has now like is merging with AI. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if there's all this parasites in the body, how do we know that in some, like they, they can act almost like satellites, right? Like the, the parasite oh, yeah. outside wants there to be parasites on the inside because right, that's right. Sort of like the receptor for what they're trying to do. Okay. Right. So then I started to think, well, you have all these people now who are seemingly rejecting corn syrup and um, uh, processed sugars and things like that. Um, and even just people who say that they don't eat sugar, but a lot of them are on paleo diets where they do eat maple, honey, coconut sugar, yeah, agave, right? right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at those, so some of these people who go on these paleo diets are like, well, I'm not eating sugar anymore, but they, but they eat a ton of that stuff, like a ton of it. Like they're right. eating just as much of that stuff as they used to sugar and sometimes even more because they think it's okay. And if you really look at those things, they also break down to a crystalline substance that is yeah. cubic. Yeah. It's just higher quality. So now are we creating parasites that are like extreme athletes, right? We're feeding them better sugar. So they're more, you know, cause think about it. There's, there's people here who think that they're, there's conscious community and they're aware of that. And so, the, you know, they know that people are starting to reject sugar and, and, you know, and so the paleo diets come along and that's a huge trend too. And there, there's a lot of good things about that. And the diet that I eat is in some ways similar to a paleo diet, but rejects all of that kind of sugar. The only sweeteners that I still eat and I'm starting to even have some concerns about them is the xylitol and the stevia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they don't have a sugar count. So in terms of like having sugar in the body, you know, those don't do that. But particularly with the xylitol, it is crystalline in nature also. So does that, you know, it, it could be programmable. And the stevia, a lot of people don't like the taste of it, but it also, for people who are interested in having children, that's not a good idea for them to eat it because it does, in the Amazon, they use that as a birth control mechanism. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's a natural birth control mechanism that I believe once you stop eating it, it, go, it doesn't continue. It's not like it does permanent damage, right. but a lot of people right. don't know that. And there's stevia and a lot of things now when people are trying to eat healthy. Okay, so you have all these people, and a lot of people who eat these paleo diets are um, people who are into doing like CrossFit and all of that kind of exercise, which people go back and look at a show I did last year. We talked about CrossFit cults and possible mind control that's going on there and uh, Peter mm -hmm. Thiel's relationship to that and what he's doing mm -hmm. with his Palantir software and all this kind of thing. We're right. almost creating, a, it's possible, an army of people that are seemingly healthy but possibly still under complete and total mind control. Right. You know? Right. And, you're right. You know, and <coughs> the other thing is like, if you look at, um, the, I didn't used to notice this cause I used to be one of them, but if you look at the behavior of people who are, um, consume a lot of sugar, and I would actually even say in some ways that people who consume the quote unquote healthier sugars more than the people who, the, a lot of times the people who, uh, consume the, the corn syrup and the GMO and the regular sugar, they're just completely out to lunch on the couch watching cartoons and you know, whatever. But right. these people who are seemingly thinking they're doing healthy, if you really observe their behavior, there is something about it that is, that is very militant, very programmed, very, um, very controlled in some ways. And, mm -hmm. um, and also like is some level of, I'm careful how I say this, but parasitic type of consciousness sometimes mm -hmm. going on there. Right. Um, and uh, I, I just, it's becoming more and more obvious to me. And I just feel like, wow, this is, um, I feel like I'm onto something. And I would like to have more time to, to look into it and whatnot. But mm -hmm. I, think it, um, I think it is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I think, uh, yeah. And I, I, I feel like it would, you know. Well, you know what, Emily, we can continue to have these conversations when you yeah. have something that you want to say about yeah. it, and then we can just make a body of work that yeah. is you, as, as you come up with stuff, let's make this body of work because it's yeah. in the conversations, the back and forth yeah. conversations that things get busted wide open. Yeah. I, this is the only way, I mean, it's the most fruitful thing that we can do is have these conversations because <clears throat> there's like four or five things that you've already said that I could circle back to, you know? Not yeah. just not just the sugar, although just to sort of work our way backwards. Um, I don't know. Are you eating fruit? So I, 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 this is something that has come up. I do eat fruit. I tend I, I I green juice not a lot. I green juice and I put an apple in my green juice and I eat, yeah. I eat I yeah. eat berries. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, I I don't eat bananas, oranges, pineapples, things that have a lot of sugar. Right. But it, it actually it has come up to me. Um, both in, so when we had, um, Lauda Leon on the show, we were talking about this a little bit, yeah. um, that, you know, she, she doesn't eat fruit or anything like that at I all. I don't either. I don't and, either. And the other day I was in conversation with, um, my friend Danny, who we actually just had on the show last night. And we were talking about how even just the taste of anything sweet immediately gets you hooked, takes you out of your body, like makes you, I mean, think about it. If you, you, and parents at this point, you know, a lot of them should know this. You resist giving your child juice as long as you can, because once they taste the juice, they're never going to want the water or anything like that again. Exactly. And it, it's true. And you watch kids like, you know, it's crazy. And I see adults like that too. I, was, well, I witnessed a, a, an adult this summer who drinks more juice than any five-year-old I've ever seen, you know? Right. right. Um, but the, uh, even with stevia and xylitol, my friend was saying how when, when we get some little xylitol or stevia candies that taste good, and we're like, oh, we can have this because it's not full of sugar. Immediately, you like, you want them all the time. You're eating a lot of them. And it's, it, it's like being under the control of something that is outside of yourself. Right. It's inside of you, and now it's in control of you, and which well, is to me the definition of programmable matter. And that's why I'm taking, yeah. I, that's why, you know, I'm going to take a look at xylitol and stevia the same way that I have um, with sugar. So yeah, ab absolutely. Like I, I think that. <clears throat> now, as yeah. far as the, the is, is you, you know, you describe a green juice. I think that's one of the healthiest things you can put in your body. I love to do that. You know, the mean green stuff with just one, um, granny Smith apple in there for the yeah. pectin, mm -hmm. or you can even just put pectin in if you want to, Yeah. How, you know, however, I, I learned a long time ago that my body doesn't care what it is, it, it, what kind of sugar I put in it, whether it's refined sugar, fruit, whatever, yeah. Honey, mm -hmm. molasses, maple yep. syrup, sugar, sugar to my body, and it's bad. You yeah. know what I mean? My body yeah. can't. My my body can't handle it. 
Um, and I always thought, well, maybe that's because I've destroyed some capacity that my body had to deal with. But no, my body just cannot handle sugars in any form. And when I say fruit, it freaks people out. But it's it's actually true. I, I think it's true. I, I, this whole conversation like that I've been having with people for the last couple of weeks has taken me back to, like, I'm not a religious person. I don't really know anything about the scriptures or text or anything like that. But maybe the reason that that the you know Adam and Eve and the you know when they bit the apple maybe yeah. that's when humanity started to fall was when they tasted sugar. And if you look, brilliant Emily. If you that's look, it, maybe it has nothing to do with like the, you know like that's when the snake came, the serpent, which is a like a worm, like a parasite, like it right. Like if you look at the, on our Apple computers, there's an apple with a bite out of it. Maybe the reason the computers have control of us is because we took the bite of the apple. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's actually fantastic. Brilliant. Oh, I can't yeah. wait for people to hear that at that <laughs> particular bit of this. That's yeah. absolutely fantastic. And, you know, just a couple of things really quick, Anne, before I forget. Um, people have been asking me, and this is really random, but I'm going to stick it in. Yeah. When I'm doing interviews these days, people are asking me what the hell it was that Harold was giving out, selling. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? He said, I, yeah. I, I will say... Yeah, I know he was he was selling something that he said was an antidote to this to this stuff, but I absolutely have no idea what's in it. And there's all kinds of rumors going on about it, like oh, it was actually black goo. It was itself black goo, but again, programmable matter. Everybody mm -hmm. was speculating that if something was in it, that was programmable matter. So yes, absolutely, you're on the right track with that one for sure. And in terms of these e-cigarettes, <clears throat> sorry, I talked. All night long. No, and no you worries. know what? Once I get started with, they gave me an actual mic last night. I was just talking and talking. <laughs> <laughs> not you. Not yeah, you. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> anyway, so I have a bit of a voice issue this morning. But it, let me talk to you about these e-cigarettes out there. Please. Emily, I, I mean, this is preaching to the choir with Emily. So, but um, there's this thing that you get called popcorn lung. Have you seen that? No. When you smoke these cigarettes, it blows out the uh, the uh, alveoli in your lungs, mm -hmm. makes them, it breaks them down where you might have a, maybe a, it per square inch. I don't know. This is a random number, but say you have 50 little compartments per rent per inch. It blows them out to where you have like four. It makes, it, it breaks down the walls mm -hmm. of your lungs and makes these huge spaces. It's, they call it popcorn lung and it's not curable. There's nothing they can do about it. So it's really seriously wow. damaging your lungs. What that sounds like to me, though, in some ways, is is like um, a leaky gut or irritable bowel syndrome. And lots of people with candida develop that. And what that is, is so what happens with candida, candida is a ubiquitous yeast. that It is in everything. It's not, if, if it's in balance, it's not a horrible thing. But once it becomes out of balance, and there's many ways that that happens, it, it uh, you know, grows over into fungus, right? Creates a lot of fungus. And then that fungus pokes holes in the gut lining that allow parasites to start going through. And so that's what creates the irritable bowel and leaky gut. What you're talking about sounds like opening up the, the parts of the lung that should be covered and safe, allowing sugar to come through it, allowing all of it to bleed through just like the same thing in the leaky gut. So it sounds like a similar thing there. So it wouldn't surprise me if that a that it does that but maybe that's even the whole purpose of it yeah know? look up popcorn lung look up popcorn lung um and, and, and somebody i love very much uh was using one of those things and literally just gave her a carton of cigarettes i know there's sugar in that tobacco but yep. i would rather have her you know i said go i'd rather see smoke yeah tobacco yeah. than suck on one of those things at this point. totally so anyway be aware of that be very very aware of that okay so yeah, there's a, there's one other thing with the e-cigarettes I want to say real fast. We're talking. Yeah, yeah. This is maybe this is maybe a stretch, but this is where my mind goes. Right, this is what okay. we do. Do it. So you have like I'll, I was, I'll be at a party and like and I'll see like a big guy, masculine guy, ripped, and he's smoking one of those things, mm -hmm. and then he smells like French toast. So like or, or you know or cinnamon yeah, buns yeah. or right, gummy yeah. bears or whatever. Right. Right. So, like he smells sweet so again so then like women used to be attracted to manly men you know what i mean or mm -hmm. whatever and now it's like they're attracted to french toast to gummy bears to like <laughs> something sugary and sweet, which is right. also part of the addiction it's like right. okay like, 
the whole thing, like everybody smells like candy all the time. And it's also like the bath products that are like flavored like candy and food. What, you know, are we taking in sugar through our skin as well? And like, right. you know, people, even I get mad when I see someone smoking that stuff because I intentionally don't eat sugar, but I know that when someone blows that shit around me, I'm taking in sugar through my skin. And mm -hmm. I don't like that. That's like the same feeling as the chemtrails, you know? Right. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask you a personal question. You don't have to sure. answer it if you don't, okay. and maybe you don't even know. But okay. you started off talking about um, having this um, suspicion or, or, or semi-realization that maybe in the middle of the night you were, you were out and about. Yeah. And then the sugar, you ingested the sugar sort of as a, as a way to wake you, yourself up from the hypnosis. Right. Do you have, have you had any addition, like, has that fleshed itself out for you, Emily, in any way? Or is that just a sort of vague suspicion that you have? So it's maybe a little bit of both. Like I do, over the years, I've, you know, brought back the way for anybody who's going through like retrieval of, of memories of things like this, it doesn't, it's like comes in like waves and comes very odd sometimes. And, and it isn't like you, you don't usually get like the whole memory of the whole thing that happened that day. Right. Um, but one of the things I do have, um, and I'll say this here, is I do have memories of as a child being, um, and this was at, actually supposedly back before I was eating candy, but these things are related and also some of this stuff in, in, in the way we deal with it in terms of time is not actually linear. So yeah. I do have memories of being as a child in a roller skating rink that was in the area that I lived in, in the middle of the night by myself, or going skating around in circles. <laughs> red strobe lights flashing and listening to particular kinds of music and wow. whatever. And I, I, you know, that actually is, um, I've spoken to one other person who has a similar memory to that. Um, and if you think about it in both, that's a really great way to program a child. Like, Absolutely. Right? Especially someone like me who would later become very interested in dance music and raves and nightclubs and things like that. It's kind of setting that, um, you know, one of the things I've spoken about a lot with your friend, Mark Devlin, um, is, uh, mind control through dance music and whatnot. Um, yeah. so that's, you know, that's priming the person uh, for sure. So, yeah. um, yeah, no, like, I just, the only other thing, like the only things that are specific is like the, um, some identification of a level of missing time with some of those things that like, you know, d like, did I really know what time I was leaving the house and when I was coming back when I was doing that? Like, it, was it just really 15 or 20 minutes? Like, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I realize that, well, wait a second, like, maybe it was two o'clock when I left and five o'clock when I came home. But again, these things like, you know, I'm not, I'm at this the way I deal with this stuff is I don't really, I don't try and push the information to come back and I don't go really looking hard for like specifics because I find when I do that, then you can start to create things that yeah, you possibly. Yeah, exactly. And also, exactly. I've found that the best way to deal with it is I deal with the memories as they come and I seem to be able to deal with them that way. When I go looking, that's when things start to really like become messy for me. Um, and so, you know, I, I, um, I think, trauma, which this is, is stored in the body. The body is really intelligent and mm -hmm. the body gives me the information at the pace that I can handle it. Right. And, um, you know, and I don't, um, I'm at this point really much more interested in, um, being in control of my life going forward than in bringing up all of the, I, you know, the things that I need to know will be revealed to me over time. Um, right. and you know, and once I'm on to some, once something has come up a little bit, then I do look into it somewhat. Um, but I have spoken, you know, with others who talk about e either the same issues with, with candy. You know, if you look into some of the cultures that do like, um, ayahuasca ceremonies and, and vision quests and things like that, one of the ways they bring people back into their body is by feeding them sugar. And so it would make a lot of sense. The people who run programs, they use psychedelics in these programs. They know that. They sure. know that like, you know, a, a way to anchor somebody back into their core personality or into their own body is by feeding them sugar. Wow. Now in the Amazon, they'll give you a piece of fruit or whatever, but you know, it's the same, it's the same kind of idea. Um, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. That's geez, 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 Mary and Joseph. I, I don't <laughs> want to use the whole phrase there. That's what I'm thinking. That yeah. was like a, that was the most packed 20 minutes I've spent in a while, dude. <laughs> well done. Well Thank done. You. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do because Emily knows that I'm just completely a basket case because I was out doing a lecture last night. I'm going to put this out as 20 minutes or whatever. I don't know. It could have been more than that. With Emily today. 
And I hope when Emily has things like this that she that she's trying to unpack, that she'll unpack it in this way. We'll try to put a whole show together at some point when we have enough bits to do that. Or maybe we could do it on you and Randy, whatever. You know what exactly. I mean? Yeah. It'll come around. It'll come together. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm really grateful to you for doing this because I am absolutely convinced that if we don't understand food, yeah. if we don't yeah. understand food, we are so screwed because yeah. that's yeah. really one of the major ways they've got us through our addictions. They've yeah. addicted yeah. us up one side and down the other by using the five senses. We have way more than five oh. senses gang, way more but there's five that they're able to lock us down with and food, you know, um, five minutes on the tongue and yeah. it, it, you know what it does once it gets down in there is anybody's guess really, but um, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. <laughs> you know, that's for damn sure. Okay. And please look up popcorn. Like you've got one of those yeah. things in your mouth, go buy a carton of cigarettes, man. That's what I did for someone I love. I was like, get that away from yourself go the other direction i'm not advocating smoking yeah processed tobacco you know cigarettes i'm just saying i'd much rather see people do that than than put one of those vapes in their mouth right yeah absolutely yeah? i agree yeah okay okay darling i'm gonna have this out in about 15 minutes okay i want to tell you i want to tell you one thing off the air real quick yes. when we're done, oh, so. all right okay hey, well then we're gonna yeah. say goodbye to you guys and i'm gonna I'm going to have super secrets with my friend Emily now. <laughs> All right. This is Off Planet Radio.